Welcome back to Duke Scopy TV. Now, automated versus manual trading is a debate that has surrounded the financial community for years as traders seek the best strategy for their trades. Now, here to discuss this with me further today is Michael Zut from Quants. Michael, thank you very much for coming to the studio today. Thank you for having me. Now, firstly, can you tell us what separates automated versus manual trading? Well, automated trading is based on a fixed plan. So a, a model then automatically um, follows a given set of rules and then deals automatically, whereby the manual trader always needs uh, human intervention, human decision for entering or exiting uh, a trade. Now if we look into the argument that surrounds the two, a proponent for manual trading told the Wall Street Journal that autopilots can fly a plane, but you want someone's hand on the wheel sometimes. Yes. But with between 60 to 75 percent of currency focused hedge funds relying on computer modeling, what splits the financial community on this? I think it's, it's about believing or non-believing. It's difficult to say what's better and what's not working or what's working. In the end, uh, you could also raise the question, is high frequency trading better than trend following, for example? Uh, I couldn't agree more about the uh, remarks you made about uh, hands on the wheel in an airplane. I too feel safer in an airplane when there is a pilot aboard. But uh, then again, you know, 75% of uh, general aviation accidents are pilot errors. So having a, a pilot on board is not a guarantee for a safe landing. In the end, it comes down to your, uh, to probably your individual, your, your, your character. What are you comfortable with? That's, that's the most important thing. And some people are trend followers, like I said. Some people are high frequency traders. Some people believe in models. And some are really the, the, the aggressive scalpers, the buyers, the sellers, the manual traders, if you wish. Yeah. You mentioned their sort of individual traits, and we know that there is no one-size-fits-all strategy. Mm. So, as you've mentioned, surely the success of each strategy is down to an individual business model, or even in recreational trading, individual sort of trading habits, surely? Um, yeah. Well, of course, a model is as good as um, the input it's been given you, garbage in, garbage out. Um, so, yes, it does depend on the individual trader as well. A, uh, a trader may, may be a, a good trader on the long run, but he may have a bad day, maybe the situation at home. Um, anything that could influence his, tra his, his trading um, capabilities. Uh, it's, in the end, it's, it's, it's a human job, the, uh, the manual trading. And um, as I always look at, at, at other things next to trading as well. You know, there may be football players who are very successful in one team being transferred to another. And, and not perform at all, for whatever reason. And therefore, what side of this debate does Quants fall on? Well, Quants obviously is uh, trading based on models, on uh, technical indicators, fixed plan, fixed set of rules, and we do not divert from that. So it does happen that I look at the screen and I find myself long euro dollar, and I think, what's going on? Why am I long? The ECB just cut interest rates. Models can be so stupid. But then again, it's a model. It has proven its uh, prof uh, uh, profitability over the long run. And we cannot just all of a sudden um, break into it and, and change the rules while the game is on. So we are very clear in our stance that the models do the work and we do not interfere. Michael, thank you very much for joining us. Great comments there. Thank you. That's all we've got time for right now. Have a will be back shortly with more exclusive interviews. So see you then. Oh, <laughs>